I'm hoping everyone can see my screen. Uh, you know, in the past, I've really focused in on uh, cultural controls and mechanical exclusion, uh, biological control, pollination, th those things. And I consider those the bedrock of IPM. But one area I, I've really not gotten into as much has been uh, uh, with this group has been insecticides. And uh, I guess some of this comes from the questions I've been asked in, in just the, the last week or so. And uh, so I thought a, a good uh, focus for this talk is uh, uh, when insecticides don't work. So, you know, wh when we do use insecticides, when they're used properly, and I'm not just talking about synthetic, this is organics too, they can help prevent, reduce, or mitigate pest problems. Uh, the one thing insecticides in themselves don't do is they don't increase yield. You know, if, if you're applying insecticide, you're your plants aren't miraculously going to produce more. What we're going to do is protect their yield potential. And one thing that uh, I frequently run across is that uh, when people do use insecticides, sometimes those applications are entirely ineffective. And, th and that was really going to be the focus of the talk today is why are some of these insecticide applications uh, just not working? So I, I'm, I'm going to run through some of those. Really, the first uh, reason why I think insecticide applications fail is that these products are used at the wrong time. And we're trying to control uh, these pests when the pests have already uh, located themselves in protected parts of the plant. So they're, they're, they're in the, the canes, they're, they're in the trunk, they're in the fruit, but they're protected by the plant material themselves. And uh, most of the time we're using non-systemic type products and they're not gonna be able to get in there and control that pest. And so it was an issue of timing. And usually it's we're applying these materials too late. The, the insects are already in there. There's a lot of these insects that we deal with on, on fruit crops that uh, will find protected places within the plant. You know, we, we just heard about spotted wing drosophila and African fig fly, but, you know, the list is quite long. Plum curculio, coddling moth, oriental fruit moth, you know, you can see see those uh, different pests. So uh, it's it's a lot similar to disease management with a lot of these pests is that we have to control them before they infest the plant, similar to how we control diseases before they infect the plant. And so, you know, some of the things uh, we use to help decide whether or not uh, and when we're gonna use uh, insecticides, uh, we, we use trapping tools. And a lot of these trapping tools are aimed towards the adults. We heard about the apple cider vinegar traps uh, for spotted wing drosophila. We have uh, pheromone traps that we're using. And th this alerts us in advance to the pest getting into the plant that we're gonna have a potential pest problem. Uh, a lot of times we can use the number that come into these traps to indicate whether or not there's gonna be enough that, that we need to worry about them. You know, with coddling moth, we have less than five moths per week. We say, don't worry about that. But once they hit that threshold, uh, then we say, you know, it's going to be uh, uh, prudent if you do something about your, your coddling moth program. The other thing we get from these traps is the timing. It tells us when these pests are active, at least when the adult stage is active. And then we have models, and we have a, uh, several models up on the University of Kentucky Ag Weather Station uh, website uh, where you can enter the number of moths that come in and you enter the, the date that you, you found those, those insects in your trap, it will run some what we call degree days model, and it will forecast the day that you, you would best uh, control those pests. So uh, the traps are used for the need as well as the timing of these insecticide applications. So that, that's really addressing that, that first issue. You know, pests that are just on the outside of the plant, you know, I have some Japanese beetles here, you know, a lot of those pests, you know, defoliators and things like that, uh, we can just use direct counts. Uh, the, the sprays when the insect is on the outside of the plant can be very effective. And it, again, it doesn't matter if these are conventional controls or organic controls, uh, but we, we can use thresholds and spray for those pests as needed 
and timing tends to be uh, less critical for those pests. The next reason why applications fail is pest stage. And, you know, uh, a lot of times people say, well, I do have this pest. You know, you see the San Jose scale in the picture here. And this is a pest that's very sensitive to when we spray to control them. Uh, most of our con uh, commercial growers are actually using soft chemistry called insect growth regulators. But one downside to those insect growth regulators is they're very stage dependent. And so it really matters uh, when we spray. And if we spray at the wrong time, we may not get any control at all. And so here are some, some of the very stage specific groups of insecticides we work with. So the growth regulators, you know, commercial growers will, will uh, uh, recognize them by those uh, mode of action or MOA uh, group numbers. And you can see we have a, a large group of uh, insect growth regulators. In general, if I had to generalize with these, they're effective against the immature stages. Uh, they may not be or, or, or may only be partially effective against the adults and, and other stages. So we really need to target those against the immatures. And oftentimes it's the earliest of those immatures uh, that, that we use. Uh, the BT products, they're, they're not stage uh, specific, but they are more insect group specific. And, and most of the uh, BT products we're using are very effective only against caterpillars. Uh, neem, it's a common one in you know, organic circles, and that's going to be most effective against immatures as well as some of the soft-bodied insects. Now, down at the bottom, I have a uh, that, that pointer right there is what I call a rule of thumb, and that is that the younger stages generally are going to be much easier to control than larger stages, and that, that could be large larvae versus small larvae, and the reason is it generally takes a bigger dose to kill insects when they're larger than when they're smaller. So we really try and target those younger stages uh, whenever possible. The third reason why insecticide applications fail is coverage. You know, if, if you're not getting coverage of the plant uh, to areas of the plant where the insect's going to attack, uh, you're not going to get high levels of control. So uh, coverage becomes very critical. We have some tools that we use to uh, determine what the coverage is. This, this is water sensitive paper. This is what commercial growers use. You know, a, a backyard gardener might use something like uh, paper from a cash register and they may put some food color in a, in a uh, uh, sprayer uh, that has just plain water. And, and they'll, you hang these in various places. You basically hide them on the plant in places where insects might attack. You spray your crop like you would and you look to see what level of coverage you get. And you can see that, you know, uh, how we spray, we can get very different levels of coverage. You know, if you're not getting any coverage at all, you may need to do some things like, you know, slow down when you spray, increase your, your, your spray pressure, change nozzles, those types of things to improve coverage. Uh, you know, if ideally we would like to see something between those two cards as the proper coverage with, uh, uh, commercial fruit. And we do need to recalibrate sprayers regularly. You know, early in, in the year when you have less uh, leaves on a plant, it's going to be much easier to get good coverage. Late in the season, when the canopies get very dense, it gets much more difficult. And you may have to increase both volume and pressure to get the same level of, uh, of control. The third or the fourth reason why we don't get good control with insecticides is improper rate. Uh, you know, you need to read the label. You know, one, one of my roles is pesticide safety education. And you must stay within the rate range on the label. I mean, th 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 this is very, very critical. If you don't apply enough of the pesticide on the label, it's likely to be ineffective. And you may be promoting uh, insect resistance to that pesticide by not applying enough. If you go over the label rate, you're going to run into unintended consequences. You know, it can have some effects. You know, you could have excessive residues on the produce, so you don't know if it's safe or not uh, to eat. It's probably not safe at that point. Uh, you, you may damage, damage pollinators and natural enemies. 
uh, you, you may damage the plant itself. You, you can have some crop safety issues wh when you uh, exceed the label uh, range on, on, on with the pesticide. So, you know, figure out what that uh, range is on the label and then do the math, you know, based on the area you're going to spray, the number of plants you're going to spray, you need to figure out what the correct correct dosage you're you're going to put out. But uh, be sure to stay within that that proper label range. Product selection. I know uh, I, I showed a slide to commercial growers a number of years ago, and I, I came up with the number of of criteria that commercial growers use to select products. And it was on the order of 14 different factors they, they may consider when determining what product to use. Uh, every pest uh, has a, a, a different set of effective pesticides that will control them. So efficacy is very important, but for you know, growers also uh, availability of the product you know, how many days you have to wait before harvest, the, the re-entry interval in the field, the effect on pollinators, the effect on natural enemies, uh, how many pests that it, it may control uh, with that one product. There, there's many different things that, that people will consider when selecting a product, but efficacy, efficacy is one of those. Uh, you know, in our commercial uh, spray guides, the, this is a, just a table from, from that guide, and you can see for every product uh, on that table, uh, we'll, we'll have, you know, these efficacy ratings here. E is excellent. G is good. Uh, F is fair. But we'll rate how, how different products uh, perform against uh, different insect pests in, in the field. So efficacy is very important. And while there are some other reasons, the last one I'm going to finish up with today is Mother Nature. You know, sometimes you, you seem to be doing everything right. You know, you're, you're getting it on at the right time, the right product, the right coverage, the right rate, uh, and it still doesn't work. And, and there are some reasons for that. You know, one is uh, weather can be a, a very important factor, and it's something out of our control. But, you know, just a, a few weeks ago, we had those 8 to 13-inch rains in western Kentucky. Yes, that can very much affect, you know, the re residual activity of some products on the plants, you know, particularly uh, pesticides that ha have what we call dislodgeable residues that rain can can wash them off. High temperatures also affect some of our insecticides, particularly one, one group of insecticides doesn't perform well when the temperatures get above 90 or 95 degrees. They, 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 they work uh, 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 more poorly at those temperatures. And occasionally, we can just have these, these massive insect outbreaks. And uh, sometimes, you know, even if you get 99.9% .9 control of the pest population, if the pest population is so excessive, that may not be uh, sufficient control. So there's a number of reasons uh, why insecticides don't work. Just because you used a particular insecticide doesn't mean you're going to get the effect that you want. And again, the, uh, just a, a final note, uh, when you do use insecticides, think about how they're going to fit into your overall program for pollinator management, for natural enemy management, and, and how you're going to use it in a way that's going to produce a uh, safe crop for you and potentially your customers.